Welcome to Choice Classic Radio, where we bring to you the greatest old-time radio shows. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and thank you for donating at choiceclassicradio.com. Makers of Campbell Soup present the Campbell Playhouse. Orson Welles, producer. Good evening. This is Orson Welles. Tonight, Miss Helen Hayes joins us again in the Campbell Playhouse. And our story is Lillian. When Molnar wrote this incredibly beautiful and beautifully incredible little fantasy, it was at first received with a general bewilderment which I hope we won't revive tonight. Nobody knew what to make of Lillian, which was a straight-faced account of a carnival man who stole a star out of the blue heavens and came back from the dead to give it to a child. The piece was withdrawn, which seems understandable... And you wouldn't be hearing it now if it hadn't been tried again ten years later. This is a success story because the history of Lillian in every language is the story of a success. I don't know what's happened to people since Lillian's first and, let's pray, its only failure. I don't know whether Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs would have broken all box office records in those cozy old days when security was the premise of human life. And peace was a promise. But I do know that if Tinkerbell were dying again in one of our theaters and Peter Pan were asking another audience if they believed in fairies, there would be the same majority of the affirmative. And I do believe that as long as we can tolerate fiction, which is what didn't happen, we'll welcome fantasy, which is what doesn't. Fantasy is the highest reach of the mind. It is our first conclusion and our last. A tall story was told after the first fire that was ever built. And we haven't outgrown magic, even if we know better. I am too far away from you for you to hear me, but you do. A gesture, a gesture of terrible simplicity will eliminate my voice from the sanctity of your attention. You are accustomed to this power and may be bored with it. Dear listener, your daily routine is a perfect monotony of miracles. The new machinery of this century presents us with equivalents to the pumpkin coach, the magic carpet, and the looking glass. But our magic is a magic trick. The trouble is, Mr. Edison's wizardry is like Mr. Thurston's. There's a way of doing it all with wires. Here, then, is a trick nobody can do, an effect without a cause, a tale without the falsehood bottom of a fiction, a fable. And Lillian, like all fables, is dedicated to the proposition that the unlikely is not unnecessary, that you and I are interested in the impossible, and that even in these times, there is time for Once Upon a Time. Now, before our play begins, Ernest Chappell, I know, has a comment to make on a food preference of most people, Mr. Chappell. Thank you, Orson Welles. Let me ask all of you this. Have you ever noticed, when you've had lunch or dinner in a restaurant, how frequently tomato soup heads the menu, and how regularly you hear people all around you saying, I'll take the tomato soup? Indeed, when you're eating out and you're in a festive mood, isn't tomato the soup you most often decide on? At home, too, tomato is the soup that families enjoy time and time again and never seem to tire of. And I think the reason it's the favorite soup with most people is because the magic matchless flavor of tomato soup, as Campbell's make it, has given us all a special liking for it. There's a zest, a dash, a liveliness about the flavor of Campbell's tomato soup that captures us and brings us back again and again. By the very look of a bright red plateful speaks of good cheer, and we enjoy it from the first racy spoonful to the last delicious drop. Yes, there's no question that Campbell's tomato is the world's number one soup, served and deeply enjoyed at lunch and dinner in more homes than any other soup. Will Campbell's tomato soup be number one on your grocery list tomorrow morning? I hope it will. And now, Lillian, with our guest of the season and of this evening, Miss Helen Hayes. And here is Orson Welles to set the story. Well, this is Mrs. Muscat's story. Mrs. Muscat of Muscat's Mighty Shows. 
Yes, sir, Muscat Mighty Show. I've been running the outfit ever since the old man died. 38 years now we've been playing the Gulf Coast. But, of course, business ain't what it used to be. There's been a lot of changes in the world since Muscat's Mighty Shows began, you know. Radio and movie pictures and that swing music. Folks don't take to a carnival like formerly, but we still keep going. I'm down to eight cars this summer. Sometimes I reckon I ought to put the whole outfit in storage and never open up again. Got a house in blocks here with four bedrooms, and that's where I ought to be at my age. Taking it easy, but I just can't do that somehow. I've been at it too long, I reckon, and I remember too much. Well, this here's a tall story, and maybe you won't believe it. We got some queer yarns to tell in the carnival business. Ghost stories like, you know, things that couldn't happen but did. Uh, like the time Pete Bonaventi of the Daring Bonaventis, that's the aerial act, did a back double and a half to a trapeze that weren't there. But they all seen it there, everybody. And later they remembered the catcher they seen was old Papa Arturo that Pete dropped six years before and killed somewhere in Georgia. Well, sir, this here's about a fella that come back from the dead, too. Just for one day. And everybody saw him, too. At least Julie and I did, like they saw old Arturo. But this yarn ain't unhappy like the other. It's just kind of queer and hard to figure unless you knew Lillian like Julie and I knew him. He was bad. That's the word for Lillian. Bad. But he had a way with him. Well, I guess he didn't mean to steal that star. He just couldn't help it. And then, you see, he never did give Julie nothing when he was alive. He didn't give nothing to anybody. He just took well, I guess that's what he did in the other place. He just took that star. Mine, it was a real star, not tinsel like a star on a Christmas tree or silver like the one a sheriff carries, and it weren't like one of our prizes from the stands. It wasn't just flash. A, a flash is a word we use in the carnival for stuff that looks good to the rubes and makes them want to spend the money winning at flying darts or tossing rings at the pitches. Something they wouldn't buy in a store for half a tenth of what they spend trying to get free. Oh, no, sir, this star wasn't flash. It was real. You know, a star like you see up there in the sky? I saw it, and I know. He had it in his pocket, wrapped up in an old dirty handkerchief. He had his back turned, and I saw him open it up and look at it quick, just to make sure it was there. He was right by the weight guessing machine. And when I walked up to him, he was gone. I understand he'd been dead 12 years. Yes, sir, he was the fastest pitchman I ever had. Uh, but pitchman is another word of ours in the carny. I mean, carnival. It's the fellow who's talking to throw in the darts or pitching the rings or maybe getting your weight guess. You know, a fast talker. A good one's the best thing we've got in the car. That's the best thing we've got anyhow. Talk. Talk to me and put the hand down in the pocket and bring out some more change. And Lillian could talk the last nickel out of anybody, especially the girls. <laughs> I beg pardon. You want to hear the story, of course. Well, Sim, here's how it happened. It's a kind of love story. Not mushy, but there's love in it. Real love. I admit I was crazy for him myself. I was younger then, so was Julie. She loved him right off. When I guess in his way, let him love Julie. Guess that's why I come back from being dead with that star he'd stole out of the blue sky. But I don't know. It all begun in a bit, Dan, where Julie come from and where Lillian met her. <laughs> I remember how mad I was. Mad at little Julie and that Maria pal. Moon Catherine they was, the both of them. Around Lillian. Come on, go on, Dan! Run, what do I want to run for? Nobody's scared of that. I go want on, to go on, get out of here. I can take a lot. I can, but when a girl starts carrying on the way, why don't we go on and tell you old hey, tickets and leave us alone? Hey, what's going on here? What's the trouble? What's she done? What's she done, Mr. Lillian? She's been up and he was me, and I'm pulling out. That's what. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lillian, if I come to your stand and pay you to guess how much I weigh, will you throw me out? Sure, I shall if I feel like it, and if I don't, I won't. There you are. You see, Julie? Thanks, Mr. Lillian. I guess I can hug a girl a little when I'm guessing her weight if I want to. Let's see a little girl. You come to my stand any time you feel like it. Come every day if you feel like it. You and your girlfriend. And if you have the money, I guess you wait for nothing. Thank Maybe you, you think I can't throw you out. No, you can't. I can fry you any time I feel like it, just like that. Well, it seems like you feel like it right now. That's fine. I'm fired. You're a fool, you are, Lily. I'm letting no kind little country girl lose you the best job you'll ever hope to have. Mr. Lily, I don't want to get you in any trouble. Then get out of here, quick, before I get Hey there, there, Mrs. Muscat. Get away from Ellie, that girl alone. If I ever get my hands on you, her, what? You... Listen here, Mrs. Muscat. I never hit a woman yet. I'm serious. If you touch this kid here, I'll give you the darndest beating you ever had in your life. Now you are back. Goodbye, Mrs. Hey, Muscat. Don't you ever come back Gee, Mr. Liam, I'm awful sorry. Don't you pity me or I'll hit you. Don't you pity me either. We're not pitying you, Mr. Muscat. You're a liar. You are pitying me. I can see it in your face. But, well, you don't have to. I can get along with uh, Mrs. Muscat any time. What are you going to do now, Mr. Lillian? Me have a drink. That's always the first thing I do when I'm mad. I have a drink. Then you are mad about losing your job. No, just about how I'm going to pay for the drink. 
Or maybe you're going to buy me a drink. How much money you got? Eight cents. Is that all? I had a half a dollar, but I spent most of it having myself weighed. How about you, Marie? Well, five cents. But I need that to get home on the sinker. Hmm. You girls stay here while I go back to stand and get my stuff. Don't worry about it. I come back, we go somewhere and get a drink. But, Mr. Lee, we... Don't worry, I'll pay for it. You wait here for me. Yeah. Yes, you Mr. always want You sorrowful? Are you? I think he's right, Peter. Well, what you looking after him like that for? Nothing. Except I'm sorry he lost his job. It's our fault he lost his job. Because he's fallen in love with you. Marie, he has not. Yes, too. He's crazy about it. Oh, Marie, you're crazy. I couldn't help it if he put his arm around me when he was guessing my weight. I couldn't tell him not to after he'd done it. Besides, how do you expect him to guess your weight if he doesn't even touch you? Mm, I bet you didn't even like him to do it. No, I didn't. It's part of his job. What are you waiting for him for? Why don't we go home? Well, he's... Said to wait for him. I don't see why. Well, just because a fellow like Hello? that. Hello? Are you still here? Hello, Mr. Lillian. Hello, Mr. Lillian. Who are you waiting for? You told us to wait. Don't butt in, you. Nobody's talking to you. Well, you asked us. Look, we... you keep your mouth shut. What do you reckon I'd want the two of you? I meant one of you is to wait. The other goes home. Yes, yes Mr. Lillian. Well, I said one of you goes home. Where do you live? East Street, Street. Well, your folks? Yes, sir. How about you? I live right next door to her with my uncle. Well, one of you goes on home, one of you stays there. Come on, which is it? Come on, make up your minds. Which one of you stays? He'll be locked out if you don't get home on time. Who will? Julie. She has to be in by nine. Her uncle said next time she came in after nine, he'll throw out. Is that right? They throw you out if you're not back on time? I reckon so. Well, I was thrown out, wasn't I, just now by Miss Muscat? Yes, sir. Well? Would you like me to run along, Julie? can't tell you what to do. You can stay here if you want to, Julie. Come on, come on, make up your mind. I haven't gone all night. Well, do you want me to go, Julie? Why do you keep asking me that, Marie? Well, I don't know best what to do, Julie. All right, Marie. I guess you can go. Anything you say, Julie. Good night, Mr. Miller. Good night, Marie. Good night. Good night, Marie. Now, we're both thrown out. Had any supper? No, sir. Want to get something to eat? No, sir. Well, you don't come this kind of a much, do you? I've only seen you around twice. You been here more than that? Oh, yes, I've been here every night since you opened up. Did you see me? Yes. You know I was Lillian? Yes, they told me. Say, you got a sweetheart? No. Yeah, hey, don't lie to me like that. I had not honest, Mr. Lillian. If I had, I'd tell you. genuine lying trick you are, sister. I ought to walk out on you. Oh, you're mistaken, Mr. Lillian. I haven't ever had one. Honest. Well, why don't you try and stop kidding me? Why won't you believe me? You're just staying here with me the first time I asked you. You know your way around. No, I don't, Mr. Lillian. You would have been so easy if you hadn't done it before. Honest, Mr. Lillian. Well, what are you staying for, anyway? So you wouldn't be left alone. Alone? Oh, you must be loony. I don't have to be alone. I can get all the girls I want. Not carnival girls, either. I know. What do you know? That all the girls are crazy about you. But that's not why I stayed. I stayed because you were so good to me when Mrs. Muscat tried to throw me out. Well, then, suppose you go home now. I don't want to go home now. What if I beat it and leave you sitting here? I wouldn't yeah, go home. Yeah, that's him all right. Right away on the lawn. I know as much. Oh, Mr. William, look. I see. The sheriff, he's coming over here. I don't know. He's hanging around the carnival looking for trouble. What is it? Oh, up the old tricks, huh? Uh, oh, me? What's your name? You ought to know it by now in this one-horse county. Sheriff, he hasn't done anything. Keep still, kid. We ain't going to eat you. What are you hanging around here for? Why don't you just stand where you belong? You're busy. What's your name, miss? Who, me? I know it, Sheriff. She lives up on Sycamore Street with Uncle. Why aren't you home, then? I'm not doing anything wrong. I, I just came out to the carnival. Well, carnival's over for the night, miss. Yeah, and if I was you, I wouldn't be hanging around with no show folks. We know this, and we've had trouble with him before. Picked up nice girls like you. Says you marry her. Takes everything she got. Then on to the next town. I haven't any money, Sheriff. Well, don't say we didn't warn you. If you got any sense, you go right home. Do I have to go home? No, you don't have to. Thank you, sir. All right. Come on, Tom. Come on, sir. Say, say, ain't you afraid of me? Sheriff told you what kind of a bad fellow I was, said I'd take your money. Why, you couldn't do that. I hadn't got any. But if I had some, I'd give it to you. I'd give it all to you. You would? If you asked for it. Did you ever have a fellow you gave money to? No. Haven't you ever had anybody in love with you? No. Are you in love with me? No, Mr. Lillian. Why do you stay here? 
Do you want to marry me? No. That scared you, didn't it? You're thinking what that sheriff said. You're scared. No, I'm not, Mr. Williams. I didn't listen to what the sheriff said. You wouldn't have the nerve to marry somebody like me, would you? If I loved somebody, it wouldn't make any difference to me what it... Even if I died for him. And you'd marry a fellow like me? Yes, I would. If I loved you, Mr. Lillian. Well, you just said you didn't love me, didn't you? Why don't you go home, then? Too late now. Locked out? Yes. You know what I think? Hmm? I think even the most good for nothing can make a man out of himself if he wants to. Yes. Hmm. Hungry? No. Suppose you did have some money and I took it away from you. You could take it. I wouldn't mind. You know, all I have to do is go back to Miss Muscat at the carnival. She'll be glad to get me back. Then I'd be making money again. Plenty. I'd make a lot of money. Don't go back to her. Sure are a flock of magnolia trees around this part. Don't go back to her. She'd take me back in a second if I asked. You should see them later in the summer. And they're in full bloom. Yes. Yeah. Why well, magnolia? Then the wind blows them down. They smell so good. Business was good in the South that summer. Even after I fired Lillian. Yeah, business is all right. Well, we don't rout Muscat's mighty shows to play a stand twice in one season. This isn't considered good business. But I got to admit, three months later that same year, we was back in that same town. I told you before I'd never been in this business for money. Who's that? Good morning. Is William home? No. Gone out? He hasn't come home yet. Ah, he's not come home yet. Well, I'll wait for him. I think you remember me. My Mrs. Muscat. From the carnival, I remember. Hmm. Not home yet, huh? I'll wait if you don't mind. Just as you like. When you leave, how long has you been gone? Since yesterday. Oh, he'll be back in a minute now. That's fine. I'll wait. You think he'd be ashamed to let his wife live in a place like this? Three months and he ain't even turned a finger to work. Who told you that? Oh, you know how news gets around. That's not all I heard. I heard he was in jail last week. But they let him out right away. Well, it's not the first time Lillian's been locked up. Why'd they let him go? Because he hadn't done anything wrong. Maybe he's doing nothing wrong when he beats you. Who told you? Oh, he's a bad one, that Lillian. He always was. He's not bad. Not really bad. He gets wild sometimes. But then he's gentle, too, sometimes. Last night, just before I went away, he was gentle. The wind was blowing from over the carnival, and we could hear the music of America round, and... I don't know, something came over him and... and then he was very gentle. Did he say anything? No, I didn't say anything. He just sat there, very quiet. And his eyes staring straight ahead of him. Thinking about you? I don't know. I'll tell you what he was thinking. He was thinking how he missed the carnival and three square meals a day and money every Saturday and girls waiting at every town all crazy for him. Hello, Lillian. Wait downstairs, Victor. Seems like you got company here, Lillian. Wait downstairs. I'll call you when I want to. You're the boy, Downstairs, boy. downstairs. I'll be right at the bottom of them. Oh, Lillian. Lillian. Miss Muscat's here to see you. I see she is. Well? Uh, aren't you going to say good morning? What for? Then what's wrong with you? Nothing, Lillian. Then shut up. Well, go on. Why don't you start asking me where I was all night? Go on, say it. I'm not saying anything, Lillian. Well, don't, or you'll get your face slapped. Lillian, Mrs. Muscat, please. I could see Mrs. Muscat. Why don't she speak up if she got something to say? What do you want, Miss Muscat? What do you suppose I want? You think I've come to pay a social call? I don't owe you any money. Yes, you do, but I know better than to come here for that. Well, then get out. You know what I'm here for, Lillian. Got a new man on the scale, haven't you? Sure I have. Well, what else do you want? He's as good as I am. He certainly is. He's every bit as good as you are. I wouldn't dream of letting him go. Julie, go in the kitchen and make me some coffee. Go on. Yes, Lily. Well, the new man's good, huh? William, why don't you stay home and sleep now? Mind your own business. I see you're going around with that low-down sneaking spitzer. First thing you know, he's going to get you in trouble. You mind your own business. 
Lillian, you look terrible. Yeah? Push your hair back from over your eyes. Old well, man's good, is he? Well, I hear you've been beating her. Mind your own business, I told you. You're a fine one, beating a skinny little underfed thing like that. You're tired of her, why don't you leave her? But there's no use beating up a little Leave her? Well, you'd like that, wouldn't you, Miss Muscat? Oh, don't flatter yourself. You do beat her, don't you? What's all this crazy talk about beating her? I hit her once, now the whole town's talking about it. You don't call that beating her, do you? All right, all right. Beating her? As if I'd beat Julie. Yeah, well, all I can say is you've been married three months and it's plain to see you're sick of it. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Lillian, I bought a new steam organ. Yeah, I know. How'd you know? Oh, we heard it last night and coming through the windows, you know. How's it sound? <laughs> yes, well, it's good. Just think of it, Lillian. All the food and liquor you want. Cigarettes and money. I'll give you five dollars a day. Uh, five dollars? The girls miss you, Lillian. Everywhere we go, they ask for you. Oh, Lillian, that's the life of you. It's the only life you know. It's the only way you can make a living. So the girls don't like the new man on the scales, huh? You know they don't. I couldn't leave, Julie, but... I, that wouldn't matter. I could be out with a carnival all summer, send Julie money, and then when I could come back and stay with her here, maybe we go some nice place together, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's just lovely. Well, now what? You must have lost your senses. That'd go great with the girls, wouldn't it? Lillian married, always running home to his wife while they'd laugh themselves sick from here to Pensacola. I know what you want. Lillian. Five dollars a day and a cut. Is that what you said? That's what you said. Well, we let it stand. We'll pull out tonight, Lillian. I won't be back here again for a year. Never, if you say so. Here's your coffee, Lillian. All right, put it down. Lillian. Well, what is it now? Nothing. I... Well, I... There's something I... I wanted to tell you. Well, tell me. I was going to tell you yesterday, only... Go on. I can't tell you here. It's private. If you come in the kitchen a minute... Can't you see I'm busy? It's important. Why are you always butting in when I'm doing something important? Get out! No. What'd you say? No. Well, now you do. Don't start fighting. You shut up! All right, Julie, come on. Better be important. Yeah, I'll bring your coffee. You wait out here, Miss Muscat. Yes, ma'am. Well? You can hit me again if you like. And don't look at me like that. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of anybody anymore. All right, all right. Spit it out. Uh, yesterday, you wanted to know what was the matter with me. You said I seemed changed. Do you remember? Yeah, did I? Lillian? Oh, I hope you aren't going to be mad at me, Lillian. What is it? I'm going to have a baby. Now, you better go back to Mrs. Muscat. I'll stay in here. Go on, Mrs. Muscat. Back to your ticket wagon. What are you talking Ms. about? Mrs. Muscat, get out of here. Then you got out of your Can't place. you see we're having our coffee? Julie's waiting in the kitchen for me. Peter, what's the matter? I said, get out. All right. All right. That's it. This time I'm through with you for good. I'll never speak to you again as long as you live. That's just fine, Mrs. Muscat. You live. Good. Good. Victor. Victor. Right here. Victor, come on. Get up. Hurry up. Come up the stairs. Hey, that old dame took a run out. Almost jumped me over. What's going on here, anyway? Fixer, did you ever have a baby? Oh, me? Listen, they need a lot of things and things, don't they? Yeah, so they say. Milk and stuff, and they get sick all the and time. And in the winter, you got to keep them warm with blankets and things, don't you? What are you wandering around about babies for, Lillian? Listen, Fixer. You said you know a way to get a whole lot of money quick. Yeah, that's right, sure. Well, how much? The more you can count, Lillian, boy. And it's easy. Easy? Just like rolling off a log. Only takes two to do it. It's got to be done today. Today? Sure. What do you say, Lily? How much is it? Oh, plenty, boy. Fifteen, sixteen thousand. Fifty, fifty. What do we do? You know where Front Street is? Yeah. Well, we go down Front Street, cross the tracks down near the... Hey, Lily, ain't you listening? What? Oh, yeah, go on. Well, we cross the tracks, hiding that old loading dock. Hide? Oh, fuck. Now, wait a minute. I'm coming to that. The man always goes right by there. What man? The paymaster. The paymaster for the steamboat you company. He's got the money on him. Well, sure, in the leather satchel. Weeks pay. How are we going to get it from him? How do you think? You mean we got it? Well, that depends on him. Most folks ain't too fond of giving money away. Listen, yeah, fixer. I didn't know. 
to get that money, we had to oh, do anything like that. Forget it, Larry. Um, after we got the money, we'd beat it anyway. South America, maybe. How do you like that, huh? South America. Yeah, Julie likes that. We take the baby, too. Yeah, what's all this baby talk you're doing, Lillian? What's the matter with you? Now, listen to me. I'm talking sense. Here's the way we work it. One of us stays on the lookout, and the other one, that's you, goes up and says to him, Excuse me, mister, but can you tell me the time? Yeah, and then what happens? Well, by that time, you got your knife in him. A knife? Yeah. You got a knife, ain't you? No. Hey, I thought you carnival boys was tough. Well, you better get one out of the kitchen. Do I have to use a knife? Well, if you just hit him, you can't be sure. you got to use something. Do I have to use something? If I take a knife out of the kitchen, Julie will see me. Oh, I'll take it so she won't see you. See, what's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. Well, then get Julie out of the kitchen. Send out for something. All right. Then she won't see you take the knife. All right. Hey, Julie, Julie! Julie! Yes. Go to the corner and get some cigarettes. Yeah, here, here's the corner. William, you're not going out, are you? You're in fix it. You'll be here when I come back? Sure, Julie, we'll be here. Well, where we be going, Julie? All right. Uh, don't run, Julie. Be careful. Careful? What do you mean? You know what I mean. You know, take your time. There's no hurry. Yeah, I know, Lily. Thanks. Goodbye. Now, go on, hurry. Get that knife. All right. You got it? Yeah, I got it. All right, let's go. Hey, what are you staring at like that? I'm not. I'm. I'm thinking. Well, don't. Come on. Before she gets back. Yeah. Now, where's the knife? Right here. I, I got inside here. Yeah, put it on the other side, over your heart. It's easier to get at. This way? Boy, that's some knife, all right. Hey, put your way under your coat quick. Let's go. Yes, yeah, Jimmy. Hey, your cigarette. I thought you weren't going out. Come on, Lillian. It's getting late. Where are you going? Please stay home. It's going to rain soon and you get wet. It ain't going to rain. Stay home, Lillian. M- M- Marie's coming over this afternoon. Don't, don't you want to see Let's Marie? Let's go, Lillian. Listen, William, stay home. Marie's bringing me some money. You can have it, all of it. We're just going for a little walk, Julie. We'll be right back. William, don't go. I'm not angry with you anymore for hitting me. William, what's that under your coat? Get out of my way! William, don't. Don't go, William. William! William! listening to the Campbell Playhouse presentation of Lillian, featuring Orson Welles and our exclusive Campbell Playhouse star, Miss Helen Hayes. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Ernest Chappell, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming you back to the Campbell Playhouse. In a moment, we shall resume our Campbell Playhouse presentation of Lillian. But first, I'd like to remind you that not so very long ago, women had to make their own soup. It was usually a long and tedious task. But they knew that good soup is something that families enjoy having regularly, so they devoted long kitchen hours each week to tending the soup kettle. But then a change came, a change that has been welcomed in countless homes. One by one, women tried Campbell's soup and compared them with their own. They knew these soups must have been made in the true home way. They saw how much the family enjoyed their fine flavor. And thoughtful husbands said to wives, with all you've got to do, I wouldn't spend time anymore making soup. Not when you can buy good soup like this. So tonight I'd like to ask you, are you still making soup at your house? If so, I'm sure it must be because you haven't tried Campbell's soup. Won't you do that? Try, for instance, Campbell's tomato soup, a rich puree of luscious red ripe tomatoes and delicate seasoning. Or try Campbell's vegetable soup with its rugged beef stock and 15 different garden vegetables. If you will, I sincerely believe your family will urge you, too, to give up making soup and serve Campbell's soup for their convenience and fine flavor. Now we resume our Campbell Playhouse presentation of Lillian, starring Helen Hayes and Orson Welles. Good down here. Throw the water. Mmm. When do we wait for the man? Behind the platform between him and the river. Now, when he comes around that warehouse. Hey. 
Look at that boat. Yeah, he's a big one, huh? I wonder where she's going. Europe, China, South America. You ever been on a ship, Lily? No, but I will be someday, maybe. Maybe soon, Julie and me, huh? Look, you can even see her name, Eastern Princess. She's a princess, all right, all white and long, shiny. How'd you like to be sailing on Boy. Got to have money for that, though. Plenty of money. Mm -hmm. Kind of paymaster's got me stacked with. You know what I heard? People on them boats that sit up there on the deck all day long in long cushion chairs right out in the sun. What do they do? Well, they don't do nothing. They just sit there, read the newspaper, smoke big cigars. Every now and then a waiter brings them a drink. That's what they say. Boy. Ah, uh, for that kind of life, you got to have money, though. Mm -hmm. The whistle. Yeah, six o'clock. Won't be long now. Come on, now. What are you going to say to the man? Well, let me see. Excuse me, mister, have you got the time? Hey, that's fine, William. Yeah. Well, why don't he come? Oh, take it easy, William. He'll be here after a while. Hey, how about a little game of dice while we wait? All right, got some dice? Well, let me see. Yeah, yeah, here, here's a pair right here. Hey, got any money? Sure, all right, let's see. Ten, twenty-five, thirty-two dollars. I got dollars, eleven cents. Oh, put it up then. Well, how much? Shoot it all. Right. There they come. Huh? Five's your point, Sixer. Yeah, and I'm going to make it too, Lillian. Come on. Feed it. It's five. Five, that's it. Hey, wake up, Lillian. I was just thinking. What? Me and Julie and the kid are on them big white boats going to South America. Oh, come on. <laughs> Shoot again. Shoot again? What with it? Oh, you're broke, Lily. You can't play. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I reckon game's over then. Yeah, I reckon it is. Oh, no, wait a minute. Here, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I'll do, Lily. I'll take it out of your share. My share? Uh-huh. Oh, my share? Oh, all right, shoot. I gotta do something. I can't wait here like this, doing nothing. Well, the man's carrying 16,000, maybe. Eight of that's yours. Shoot 4,000. 4,000 dollars? Sure, I got plenty of money. <laughs> I'm faded. I'm faded. Come on, guys. Uh-oh. Poor little Joe. Well, come on. Baby. A four. There it is. I made it. The hard way. Shoot four more. Those. Come on, boy. Got you. Eleven. Well, then. Let's see. You owe me eight thousand, huh? Shoot the eight. <laughs> can't do that, Eddie. Well, what's the matter? Go your head. Yeah, I know. But if you lose, you can't pay off. You only had eight to start with. Now, let me see them dice. Here he comes. So that's a low down. No, no, listen, listen. Yeah? Look down there, back there. Cashier. Hmm? Now don't forget, let him start walking. When yeah. he gets about halfway across the dock, we go after him, see? Oh. Now, come on. Uh, excuse me, mister. Have you got the time? Sure thing. Let me see. The time, huh? Want to know the time? Certainly. Got it right here in my inside pocket. Here it is. Now then, pick him up, you two. Well, look, we wouldn't try and pull anything on you. No, no, of course not. You and your friend only wanted to know the time. Well, it's exactly seven minutes after six. Come on, keep them up. Now, do you see what I see, boys? It's a law. That's right, boys. We've been watching you for some little time down here, the sheriff and me. You ain't got a thing on me. I ain't got nothing. All right, Pete. Come and get him. Not me, you won't. Stop! Stop or I'll shoot! Hey, goes over that chair. Where's it? He fell behind that chair. Did you get him, Sheriff? No, oh, I don't think so. He was traveling awful fast. There he is over yonder, Sheriff. Yeah. He ain't moving. Come on. I must have got him. Look. He's bleeding. Let's see. We'll turn him over on his back. Yeah. <laughs> nope. That ain't no bullet wound. No, sir. Look. Look at that knife. A kitchen knife right under his heart. Please. All the way in. Get a good job of it, poor devil. Funny, when he jumped off that roof, he must have fell on his own knife. I wonder. Are you the lady of the house? No, just a minute, I'll call you. Julie! I'm afraid there's been a bit of trouble, ma'am. Julie! Are you the lady of the house? Yes. I'm sorry, lady. All right, stand down, I guess. Easy, easy. Oh, we've got to get a doctor. Save your money, ma'am. Julie. Are you his wife? Yes. 
Julie, a sign here, please. Just a report I've got to send in. Where? Here? That's right. Julie? Thanks, lady. All right, Tom, let's go. Julie. Julie? Julie? Isn't there anything I can do? Julie? No, Marie. Julie? Do you want me to wait in the kitchen, Julie? All right. Sure, sir. William, what have I done to you? Julie. There's something. Julie. Can you hear me? Yes, William, I can hear you. Julie, something I want to tell you. Yes, Mm -hmm. William. Those times when I beat you up, Julie, I wasn't mad at you. Only I couldn't stand to see you unhappy and... It was my fault you were unhappy like that, Julie. I wasn't unhappy, Lily. Yeah, I never learned to do nothing except guess people's weights at the carnival, Julie. I couldn't get a job like other people. I wasn't going to go back to carnival and all those girls, not after I knew you, Julie. There's only you, Julie, understand? Yes, Lily. And then this last thing, I didn't even know what I was doing, Julie. Only I thought maybe if I could get you away, you and the baby and some... Nice place we can go to like something. William, too. William. Tell tell you one thing, though. When I beat you, I was right. I can be right sometimes, too. Anyway, it doesn't matter who's right. Nobody's right. Only they all think they're right. A lot they know. Yeah. Like to show them just one. Maybe if I could stay at you, you. Or if I could come back just once for a little while. Maybe I could show you. Yeah. Julie, hold my hand tight. I'm holding it tight all the time. Tighter. It's all right now. You can come in, Marie. Come in. Julie, Mrs. Muscat here from the carnival. She's waiting outside in the kitchen. Julie. Yes, she's dead. Julie, I don't be mad at me, Julie, but honestly, it's better this way. Honest, it is. Yes. A good man don't beat a woman, Julie, the way he beats you. No. You know what I think? I, I think he's better off, and so are you. Yes. Honest, Julie, you're still young. Yeah. Tell you a little while from now, you, you'll have forgotten all about him, am I right? Yes, you're right. Well, it's getting late. I'd better be going home. If you need anything, Julie, you can count on me, you know that. Sure, I know that. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, Julie, it's the best thing. Oh, this it is. The best thing that could have happened. Don't cry, Marie. Goodbye, Phil. Goodbye. Mind if I come in? Hello, Mrs. Muscat. I heard what happened. Would you mind if I, if I looked at him? No. There he is. Oh, he looks so peaceful. Won't you make up with me? I'm not mad at you, Miss Muscat. But you were. Let's make up. I got nothing to make up with you about. But I have with you. Everybody says bad things about him. Even now he's dead, except us two. You don't say it was bad. Yes, I do. Yeah, no. You beat me too, but what does it matter? I've forgotten it. That's your own business. My child, if I can help you in any way. I don't need any help. I still owe him twenty dollars back pay. You should have paid him. Well, now that he's dead, I thought perhaps it'd be the same if I paid you. It's got nothing to do with me. Please don't think I'm trying to force myself on you. We two are the only ones on earth who loved him. That's why I thought we ought to stick together. No thanks. Well, then you couldn't have loved him like I did. No. I loved him better. Yeah. Well, goodbye. Really? Sleep, Lily. Sleep. Bad, wicked, unhappy, darling boy. Sleep peaceful, Lily. 
They never understand how I feel. I can't even tell you. Not even you how I feel. You'd only laugh at me. Oh, no. No, you won't. You can't hear me anymore. You bad, bad boy. I love you. I never told you before. I couldn't tell you before. But now I've told you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Please, Lily. Here comes the end of the story. It's 12 years after Lillian died. Time for supper, Louise. Yes, Mother. Here's the soup. Oh, it's hot. That's right, dear. Put it down here. And bring up a chair. We'll have it out on the porch here. Mother, is it true we're not going to work at the mill anymore? Yes, Louise. Aunt Marie and Uncle Richard have got us a job in one of the workrooms at the hub store. It'll be nicer there mm. than at the mill, won't it? Yes, it tastes better, too. Poor widow like your mother is lucky to get such work. Eat your soup there. Mother, <laughs> mother, look. What's the matter? Look, that man there in the yard. Well, Louise, I don't see anything. There in the shadow of the maple tree. Don't you see? Oh, yes, now I see him. So dark there. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, it's just a beggar. What do you want? Nothing. <laughs> we haven't any money to give you, but if you care for some soup... Louise, go and get another plate. Yes, Mother. Have you come far today? Yeah, I come far. Are you tired? Yeah, tired. There's a bench under the tree. Sit down and rest. My daughter will bring you some soup. There it is, Mother. That's your daughter? Here you are. You're the daughter? Yes, sir. You work at the mill, don't you? Yes. And your daughter? Yes. And your husband? I've no husband. Yes, your husband's been dead for a long time. Has your husband been dead a long time? A long time. What did he die of? No one knows. He went to South America to work, and he died there. I never saw my father. Went to South America? Why do you ask so many questions? Did you know him? Well, I don't know. I've known so many people. Maybe I knew him. Well, even if you did know him... You can leave us alone with your questions. You went to South America and died there. That's all there is to tell. All right, all right. Don't be angry with me, ma'am. I didn't mean any harm. My father was a very fine man. Don't talk to me, Lily. I'm sure the child can say that about a father. My father could juggle so well with three ivory bulls. The people used to advise him to go on the stage. Who told you that? Uncle Richard. Who's that? He owns the hub store here in town. The one that used to be Marie Sweetheart? Do you know her, too? She seems to know the whole town. Oh, they're a long way from being the whole town. He was a friend of my father's. He wasn't his friend. No one was. You talk to your husband bitterly, ma'am. What's that to you? Isn't it still you? I can speak my husband any way I like. Nobody's business but mine. Sure, sure. It's your business. Mother, maybe he knew father, too. You can ask him if you like. Did you know my father? Sure, I knew your father. You know him? Oh, Lillian, sure. Was he really such a fine man? I wouldn't exactly say... I know, but... but... He was a very good man, wasn't he? He wasn't so good either. As far as I know, he was what they call a pitch man in a carnival. Did he tell funny jokes? Oh, sure, and he sang funny songs, too. In the carnival? Yeah, and did car tricks. He was... <laughs> kind of a bully, too. He even hit your mother once. That's a lie. It's true. Aren't you ashamed to tell the child such awful things about her father? You get out of here. He saw soup and bread and then lies about our dead. I didn't mean to die. What led you to tell lies to the child? Take his plate, Louise, and let him go. So he didn't hit you, ever? No, never. He was always good to me. And he did tell funny stories, too, didn't he? Oh, sure, very funny stories. Louise, you stop talking to him. Go away. You'd better go. Oh, wait a minute, miss. I, I Wait a minute. I've got a little present here for you. No. Go away. Well, what's your hurry? Take a look at what i got for you, miss. Look, it's shiny and bright, see? I bet you never seen one of these before, miss. 
Not the real thing like this one. Huh? I wrapped it up in my handkerchief for you, miss, so it wouldn't get dirty. But... Oh, Mother, it's a, a star. Louise, don't take anything from that man. He probably stole it from somewhere. Go on now, get out. Get out of here this minute. What's the harm giving the kid a little present? Go away. Oh, please, miss, please let me stay just a second till I explain about this Go present. Go on, get out. What's the matter? What'd he do? Mother, that man. He hit me on the hand hard. But it, it didn't hurt. Go on, Louise. Go into the house. But, Mother, I don't understand. It sounded so loud and it didn't hurt at all. Just as if he kissed my hand instead. Oh, Mother. Go on, dear. Go inside. But, Mother. Go on, dear. You hit my child. Yeah, I hit her. Is that all you came here for? To hit my child? No, I didn't come for that. But I did hit her, and now I'm going away. Who? Who are you? A poor, tired man who come a long way and who was hungry. And he took your soup and bread and hit your child. Are you angry with me? supper and a beggar came. We gave him some soup and then I thought of your father. My father? Your father. Lillian. Mother, tell me, has it ever happened to you? Has anyone ever hit you without hurting you? Yes, dear. It's happened to me, too. Is it possible for someone to hit you, Mother? Hard like that. Real loud and hard and, and not hurt you at all. It is possible, dear, that someone may beat you and beat you and beat you and never hurt you at all. I've been listening to the Campbell Playhouse presentation of Lillian, starring Orson Welles and Helen Hayes. In just a moment, Mr. Welles will return to our microphone with Miss Hayes. In the meantime, may I tell you why it is that when you think of soup, you're pretty sure to think first of Campbell's tomato soup? It's because a bright, glowing plate full of this soup just makes you sit up and take notice, isn't that so? Its aroma invites you, and as you sip spoonful after spoonful, there's a real thrill in its flavor. A flavor that only superb tomatoes and a choice recipe can create. I've spoken of the tomatoes that Campbell's use. Specially cultivated, these tomatoes have glorious, deep color and are extra luscious in taste. This year, they've been exceptionally fine. And you'll enjoy the flavor of these fine tomatoes now in Campbell's tomato soup, along with a delicate seasoning and golden table butter Campbell's add to make it deliciously rich and smooth. And when you serve Campbell's tomato soup, please remember that you can vary it by adding milk sometimes instead of water to make a tempting cream of tomato. Now, wouldn't a fragrant plateful contribute to the enjoyment of your dinner, perhaps tomorrow night? And now, here is Orson Welles with Helen Hayes. Ladies and gentlemen... Once more, it is my great privilege to bring you our star and guest of the season, Miss Helen Hayes. Thank you, Horton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Hayes comes to us today after the triumphal first week of her new play, Ladies and Gentlemen. I need hardly tell you that since it opened here in New York, 
At the Martin Beck Theater, there have been standees at every performance. I'm afraid, Helen, you must find it very quiet and empty here in our studio tonight. I find it very peaceful and very pleasant. To tell you the truth, Orson, that's one of the things I like the best about these Campbell Playhouse broadcasts. The fact that this is a real radio show produced for the air. Without a stage, without a curtain, without an audience in the studio. It allows the producer to produce and the actors to act for their real radio audience. For those millions of listeners sitting at their radio sets in their own homes all over the country. Well, that's our idea in doing it this way. Yes, and I think much of the quality of your productions here at the Campbell Playhouse is due to just that way of producing your shows. And speaking as an actress, Orson, that's one of the reasons it's such a pleasure to come here and play with you. Well, that's really swell of you, Helen. It makes all of us very happy to hear that. I'm sure I speak for everybody on the Campbell Playhouse. And I know I do when I ask you to know how we feel about you. We're all waiting for your next visit with us. And we thank you for another wonderful, wonderful performance. Good night, Helen. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a great American actor in what I sincerely believe to be one of the great American books. The story that begins 50 years ago. Scenes in American town. Any American town during the period when every prosperous family with children kept a Newfoundland dog. Remember? In that town, in those days... All the women who wore silk or velvet knew all the other women who wore silk and velvet, and when there was a new purchase of seal skin, sick people were got to windows to see it go by. Trotters were out. The winter afternoons racing light plays on National Avenue and Tennessee Street. Everybody recognized both the trotters and the drivers and again knew them as well on summer evenings when slim buggies whizzed by in renewals of the no-time revelry. During the earlier years of this period, trousers with a crease were considered plebeian. The crease proved that the garment had lain upon a shelf and hence was ready-made. These betraying trousers were called hand-me-downs in allusion to the shelf. With evening dress, the man wore a tan overcoat so short that his black coattails hung visible five inches below the overcoat. But after a season or two, he lengthened his overcoat till it touched his heels, and he passed out of his tight trousers into trousers like great bags. It was a hairier day than this. Ladies and gentlemen, I am reading from the works of Booth Tarkington. I am reading from the magnificent Ambersons, and it is at this passage that I stop for breath and for an embarrassed cough. Beards were to the wearer's fancy sideburns found nourishment upon childlike profiles, great drundreary whiskers, it fell that way, blue like tippets over young shoulders, and it was possible for a senator of the United States to wear a mist of white whisker upon his throat only, and not a newspaper in the land, find the ornament distinguished enough to warrant a lampoon. Because uh, I think anybody who gets a chance to produce him in anything has a right to be. Well, next week it's the Magnificent Ambersons, it's Booth Tarkington's greatest book, and it's Walter Houston in a wonderful part. Excuse me if I boast. Thank you for your time. Until next week, until the magnificent Ambersons with Walter Houston, my sponsors, the makers of Campbell Soups, and all of us in the Campbell Playhouse remain as always, and always, obediently yours. Campbell Playhouse production of Lillian, the role of Julie, was played by Miss Helen Hayes. Orson Welles was heard in the part of Lillian. Mrs. Muscat was played by Agnes Moorhead, Marie by Joan Tetzel. Bill Adams was the sheriff, 
Frank Reddick, the fixer, and Joseph Cotton, the cashier. Louise was played by Betty Philpson. Music for the Campbell Playhouse is arranged and conducted by Bernard Herman. All of us, of course, have the desire to help those less fortunate than ourselves, and so I know we will want to support the 1939 Community Mobilization for Human Needs, popularly known as the Community Chest Drive, to provide hospital care for the needy and to support family welfare work. So let us think of it not as an obligation, but as an opportunity, remembering that good Americans are good neighbors. The makers of Campbell Soups join Orson Welles in inviting you to be with us at the Campbell Playhouse again next Sunday evening when we bring you the magnificent Ambersons with Walter Houston as our guest star. Meanwhile, if you have enjoyed tonight's presentation, won't you tell your grocer so tomorrow when you order Campbell's tomato soup? This is Ernest Chappell saying thank you and good night. This is the Columbia Broadcast.